We start in space and history being made more than half a century after Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. Well, today, the billionaire businessman Jared Isaacman became the first non-professional astronaut to walk in space. Well, his first words as he stepped outside the resilient spacecraft were beautiful world. He used the first privately funded spacewalk to do mobility tests on the new type of spacesuit that will be at the forefront of the next generation of space exploration. Our science correspondent, Palab Ghosh, has the story. Back at home, we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, Earth sure looks like a perfect world. Historic words for an historic moment. Out comes the first private sector astronaut to walk in space. Silhouetted in Earth's orbit, billionaire Jared Isaacman paid millions of dollars for this experience. Earlier, he was suiting up, as were the three other crew members. The capsule has no airlock, so the entire spacecraft is in the vacuum of space once the doors opened. Port one closed. Port two closed. SpaceX Dragon is ready for seat pressurization. Then the all-important checks to make sure that the spacesuits don't leak. They've been upgraded for the spacewalk, stronger and more flexible. And the helmets have a heads-up display, so they see how well their bodies are coping. Then the air is taken out of the capsule, so the pressure inside matches what's outside. The hatch opens, and Isaacman exits the spacecraft. There's not much to do outside, apart from testing the suit, so he floats around and enjoys the view before returning to the capsule. Then it's the turn of mission specialist Sarah Gillis. She's trained for this moment for two years. We really are hoping to bring back these, this knowledge for the SpaceX team of how does a suit perform? What did we you know, really nail in the operation and in the training on the ground? Because this is a brand new training program for our SpaceX team. Um, so I think we're going to be, be doing a lot of, of data finding, fact finding that we can then bring back to make future spacewalk operations or you know, future suit design even better. It was 60 years ago that Alexei Leonov became the first person to walk in space. Since then, it's only been astronauts working for government space agencies to have done this. Until now, this is the first ever private sector crew to have walked in space. Companies like SpaceX have done some things very differently. They've built lots and lots of hardware and they've done lots of testing. And we've all seen you know, amazing explosions. We've seen things go bang. But each time they've learned from that process, you know, this could be a significant step. It'd be really exciting to see what happens with the next Polaris mission. So there are, there are two more to come, we believe. And, you know, what are the, going to be the milestones for that that are going to be uh, going to be addressed? I can't wait. The historic spacewalk now over, the crew's attention turns to carrying out experiments before beginning their journey home in two days' time. Palab Ghosh, BBC News. Well, let's head to Cardiff and speak to our science correspondent, Georgina Renard, who is watching all those pictures. It was absolutely spellbinding, wasn't it, watching that? And it seemed to go like clockwork. Yes, it was, absolutely. We had a very tense hour watching those pictures. We were watching them inside the capsule. And I did think it looks very small and, and tight in there. And then, of course, we saw Jared Isaacman emerging up through that space and coming out. He did. He sort of moved his limbs, his hands and feet to test the suit. He went back in. It went very quickly. And then his colleague, Sarah Gillis, she did the same thing. Um, the, the, we did have some feelings of, of nervousness. This was a very risky and quite dangerous operation. Um, but, of course, it, it, the, the, the mission was successful. They pulled it off, and I'm sure Jared Isaacman will be very pleased with its success. He's funded this. It's, uh, we don't know the exact cost, but just one seat on a SpaceX flight is uh, considered to be $55 billion. So he'll be really pleased that um, this was a success. And also, he has seen that amazing view of Earth from just outside the Dragon capsule. We're seeing those pictures uh, now as you were talking to us. We've now gone inside the capsule, but uh, you were talking about the potential dangers, the potential jeopardy. There were many of those moments, all of them passed off uh, with no event. Take us through the next stages now. 
So this is part of a six-day mission. The spacecraft launched on Tuesday. This is the third day. It's got two more days up in space. It will um, tomorrow. We, we think it will broadcast some sort of message. Uh, on Saturday, it will begin its descent um, from the high orbit, and then it will splash down into the ocean off the coast of Florida, where it'll be picked up. But of course, they'll be celebrating this success, learning from it, and I don't think this will be the last of the billionaires we see do a spacewalk. And they'll be hoping that someday. The, the rest of us who, who don't quite have that much money may have the opportunity to do our own, our own spacewalks, but that is probably still a long way off. Georgina, thanks very much. Well, let's stay with this. Let's speak to the space scientist, Dr. Hina Khan. Uh, doctor, welcome here to the program. I'm going to take us straight back to the pictures because they were quite incredible. You were watching them live as they happened. It's so interesting, isn't it? Because astronauts will sp spend years in, in the training, but that moment when they emerge, they see that view of the Earth, it is an extraordinary moment that takes the breath away from everyone who's done it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm not you know, one of those people that have done this, but having seen the pictures, I can imagine the, 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 what it could feel like and what it might be like to have that, that feeling to be out in, in the vastness of, of space. Um, and whilst this has been the, the privilege of a, a very select few, I think what's important to understand is that what's happened in order to for them to get here the development the the technology taken to build these new suits and experience that i think is is it's a collaborative effort for lots of different people hundreds of thousands of people who have worked on this moment to get these four individuals into this this situation tell me more then about the significance the suits that'll be part of what we need the next generation of space exploration you know those missions to mars and elsewhere but also how do you see the significance of this the first commercial spacewalk yeah, no, I think that's a, there's two really interesting things. I think the first, like you said, this is paving the way for what we all know is the return to to the moon, the return, you know, moving on to to the Mars and uh, and you know, kind of off planet habitats, and that's a clear objective for lots of different uh, government agencies, NASA, the European Space Agencies, as well as the commercial uh, space flight environment. So the testing of this, is, I think, is really exciting uh, and making sure that, as you said, it's been a success. But the broader context here within the commercial space environment is it's allowing you know, entities, commercial industry bodies to be part of this journey. We talked a little bit earlier, uh, one of your correspondents mentioned that, you know, commercial satellite development is already something that's happening um, across the board. So where it was the domain of, of state run organisations, now individual industries and, and companies can be building satellites and taking that technology to space. This is another step in that where now, you know, space flight as well as space suit and then all the, the details that is required to, uh, to have individuals or uh, people within the space domain, it's opening that up to a much broader environment. I'll come back and, to that point it. in a moment, but uh, so many extraordinary stories involved in what we've seen today. Sarah Gillis, who we saw make that second spacewalk, she started at SpaceX as an intern, didn't she? And here she is doing a spacewalk like this, making history. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's I think that's what's really exciting here is that whilst, yes, there's these few individuals with a lot of money who are able to furnish these things, it's actually opening the door for, for young people and for people who are interested in the space sector to, to be able to have that opportunity. SpaceX is a commercial or organisation. It's a, a large company which has developed its own capability. And we have companies um, of a size here in the UK as well as across other uh, Europe and, and elsewhere. So you can imagine that young people and even people within the sector are seeing there's an opportunity here for us to be part of something much bigger. Yes. I'm not uh, saying and, that everybody and, gets to be in space. But. No, and everything about this is much bigger. We saw at Space H X HQ them all breaking into applause when that hatch opened and when the first spacewalk uh, actually took place, those first few steps. It, it sort of underlines the point, the massive amount of work that goes into something like this. And You've got NASA with their trips back to the moon. Uh, your assessment, finally, of, of the pace of technological advance we're seeing now. 
So I think, yes, I think that's it. I mean, we, when we were a part of, when we, it was the domain of government agencies, NASA and the likes, there was a, a direction of travel that was being dictated by those organisations. Now bringing it out into the commercial domain, there's a highly competitive environment. And competitiveness does drive innovation. So it allows, it allows organisations to think about, right, what is the next opportunity that we can help push forward on this. And so being able to, like you said, in the last 60 years, be able to get to this point from a commercial standpoint, I think is really, really critical. Uh, and it allows that opportunity to grow much broader than just the, the select few organisations that might have done this in the past. So it's an exciting time, I think, for, for the sector as a whole. It really is. Uh, thank you for taking time to speak to us on today's programme, Dr. Hina Khan. Thank you very much.